Good morning, good morning, good morning, y'all. Y'all say I cut the hair. I actually got to get over here and do it, which is one thing I'll be doing here in a minute. Um, I got up this morning, and I want to share a word that the Lord gave me this morning. One comes from Colossians, and the other part of the word comes from the Gospels, Mark, Matthew, and Luke. And I'm going to talk about this in the best sense that I can. Um, there's going to be some changes coming to the channels. I'm going to talk about that at the end, but I want to just share something with you. I've been, uh, most of us going to a workplace in order to survive in this life, in order to pay our bills and our overhead and take care of families or take care of ourselves. Uh, to make it through this life, we have to work. And so when we work, the Bible tells us work is we work unto the Lord. It does tell us to do that. But we go into places of business in which they don't understand us. They don't know us. They don't understand who we are. They don't understand what we are about. And in recently talking, I talked with uh, one of my Christian sisters, Sherry. And Sherry, I had a situation happen at, a, at my job. And I had to go into a meeting. And I prayed. And I prayed, Lord, Lord, how do, what do I say? How do I handle this meeting? Because it was, it was a conflict resolution situation. And it was an issue, uh, in, in my humble opinion, because people in there, everybody wants to be somebody. And some people are intimidated by who you are. And instead of being who they are authentically and walking in their gifting, they may be scared of your gifting. Well, when you're a child of the Most High God, they do need to be scared. They need to be scared because of who you, whose you are, uh, who you are in him and who he is in you. And that God blesses us on a level that they don't understand. And talking to Sherry and sharing some of what took place, she says, you said too much. You putting your pearls before swine. I didn't necessarily agree with it, and I still didn't totally agree. But I love the statement because I prayed on what the Lord needed me to say. Now I'm gonna share a little bit of what I said in the meeting. I did tell them because there was a point where I realized that the people who are threatened by who I am, by my past corporate experiences, or what they've picked up about me. The fact that people were drawn to me, the fact that upper management was drawn to me, and that to them is a threat because they have their own goals, their own agendas, and they want to be important. In that meeting, I said the following. I don't want your job, your job, or your job. When I came out of being on a physical truck, and I have a corporate background, but I also drove a truck for some of you who know that. When I came out of being on a truck, there were two things that were the focus of me coming off that truck. One, to get physically healthy. This weight has got to start coming off. And two, was to start walking in ministry because God really, really in these last hours or whatever's going on, he has come in and he, I told one associate of mine, it's like God has come into my house and signed his name on my wall that says, I am your God. The way that he is working things in my life. The way that he is waking me up. And I told my biological father, I was like, it's like God has taken this word and he's made it life to me. He's made it real to me. He's, he's made it so that he's put feet to word for me. That's the best way I can tell you. He put feet to this word. In your life, in your life, we need the word to no longer be rhetoric. We need it to have life. We need it to be alive in us. Because once it's alive in us, it's rhetoric. All rhetoric is is repeating the same stuff over and over again, and it really doesn't have much meaning. You know that's what it says, but it has no impact, it has no meaning. You try to make it have meaning. You get people who put stickies on the wall. I am beautiful, I am powerful, I am this, I am that. And it's in order for the rhetoric to hopefully come alive in them. Now, it is a way in some people that works. But we need this word to become life to us. So I'm going to give you two examples. The Bible tells us that 
we are basically, we're, we're the light of the world, okay? It also tells us about hiding our light. And it talks about putting a bushel on top of the light that we have in us when we become gods, okay? Now, my biological father, he always says that we read this word, and when we read it, we read it from our Western mindset, and it's an Eastern book. But I'm also going to say we read it from the current times we're in and not the times that it's written in to understand the full depth of what it's saying. Okay? What a light was in the old time, that time frame in which this was written, would have been a candle or an oil lamp. Therefore, it would have been lit with a match. It would have been fire like this. Okay? All right? It would have been fire. I don't smoke. I do. I like incense and candles. So it would have been something like fire. Sorry about that, y'all. It would have been something, you know, a fire, a, a candle or an oil lamp. The Bible says you can't take that light and cover it with a bushel. Now, what a bushel was, if y'all know what it is, you can look it up. We got YouTube. We got um Google, we got online dictionaries. You don't have to go back and get books, although I think that's better. I'm still old school. But what a bushel was, was a basket. And it was usually of some kind of material that is cloth or and or made of usually something fibrous, um, some kind of plant material, something like that that was dry, okay? And weaved together and formed into a basket. That's a bushel. And it was meant for collecting harvest, okay? Let's go here. That's what it was meant. It's meant, thank you Lord, it's meant to collect the harvest. Instead, we taking it and we trying to cover a light. Okay? Some of us walk into our places of employment. We walk into this life. We walk into all sorts of situations. Family, friends, work. And we want to cover the light that God has in us. We want to cover up that we Christian. We want to go in there and try to be status quo. But I want to thank Sherry for something you said. We kingdom kids. Once you get into a relationship with the Lord, you kingdom kids. They're not going to understand you. You are going to irritate them. You are going to piss them off. You are going to make them angry because you're a kingdom child. And if you walk in kingdom dynamics, they're not going to comprehend you. And not comprehending is confusion. And confusion is irritation to the enemy. So he's going to come at you. And you cannot hide the light that's inside of you if you are a kingdom kid. Because the fire is going to burn. And if you try to put the bushel on top and God is working in your life, the bushel is going to catch on fire because there's fire in you. We can't cover up what we are. We can't hide it. We can't live in the rhetoric of it anymore. It's going to become life because that is what the word of God is. That's who God is when we accept him. He is life to our soul. He's life to our spirit. He's life to who we are. And we will have an impact. My biological father says when you share the word or when you share God, it will either draw them. Or to drive them. So it's going to draw them to God or it's going to drive them away. It's going to do one or two. In this life, we have to go into work situations. In this life, we have to go into world situations. In this life, we have to go into family situations. And not all family going to be saved. Not all your friends going to be saved. Not everybody in your workplace going to be saved. You might be in there with a brood of vipers. <laughs> okay? Petulant children. And they're not going to understand you. They're not. But you a kingdom kid. And a kingdom kid is somebody who as we grow in our relationship with the Lord, we can't leave him at home and close the door and lock the door and go to our workplaces, go into our family units, go into the grocery store. We can't, I can't even get in the lift, lift drive. If I take a lift ride, I end up sharing the Lord with people because the word has become life to me and I can't speak death no more. I, You can only speak life because that's what resides in us. 
You can't cover it up no more. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Lord. We can only speak life in the dead areas because that is what we represent. We represent a living God. We represent a God who is a life-changing God. And since we have light in us, those who are willing to receive will catch the fire. And if they wish to stay in the darkness, they will leave the light and go into the dark places. So let them go. You a kingdom kid. And we have to speak life. We have to live life. And living life is living in an example for him. I ain't talking perfection. Because while we in this flesh shoot, we ain't going to be perfect. We not going to be perfect. But what we want to show him. And I heard a sermon on this years ago. There used to be a thing when I was a kid called a weaver wobble. And it was a, a blow up thing. And you kids, some boys, they punch it. And you jump on it and it bounces back up. It falls and it bounces back up. We weeble wobble, but we don't stay down. And, 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 and that's what we need to let the enemy see is, oh, oh, you had nerve to come in there and punch me and, and come in all these different, where it's your family, whether it's your job, whether it's people you work with. I weeble wobble sometimes. I, I have to duck and move sometimes. It's a good boxer. I'm not, boxing is one of my, my favorite sports. But I don't stay down because... I'm a kingdom kid. I, I come from a champion God. See, he didn't stay in that grave. He came back up. He showed victory even when you tried to take him out. You might have thought he weeble wobble. You might have thought you had him down. But just like that little thing, it came right back up. We can't keep things hidden. And this word in your life when you're reading it, if it's rhetoric, you need to reach down. You need to reach into that gut place. You need to reach into your prayer life. And you need to say, Daddy God, I need this to become life to me. So that when I walk in this planet, when I move in this world, when you put opportunities before me, I am showing nothing but who you are. We weeble wobble, we don't fall down. And the word of God in me is not rhetoric, but it's power to change lives. We cannot hide our light. We, we can't hide it. We can't hide it. We also need to put our hopes on things above and not beneath. So many of us, and I'm guilty, we get worried about the things in this realm of existence. And we interact and we go into these workplaces and we worried about the stuff going on in the workplace because we got to go into the madness and we're like lord i gotta go in here to this madness in this job with these crazy behind people what we fail to realize because we're in this flesh suit is that we're looking at a flesh world i gotta go in here and deal with my family right now lord and they crazy as hell Oh my God, I got the druggies i got the alcoholics i got the crazies i got all this in my family and Lord, I got to go in here and deal with these nut balls. I got to deal with them. I got to deal with them. They, they pressuring me to go this way, that way. They, I don't care what we walk in. We are targets because we serve a most high God. And if he went through Pharisees, Sadducees, politicians, everybody and their mama coming at him from every direction, the testing in the garden wasn't the only test. The temptation in the garden, wasn't it? Satan was coming at him from every side. To kill, steal, and destroy what the enemy is about. But if my Lord, if my Lord went through it, I'm going to go through it. But I know that his light created churches. It created huge churches. When he went down, he came up. He said at the right hand of the Father, power was given. The Holy Spirit was delivered to us. And we walk in anointing. We walk in power. The word has to start becoming life to us. We can't live in rhetoric anymore, people. We are at a final hour right now. 
And whatever God is showing you to do, I tell people, I said, I don't know if God is saying my time is up, but I feel an unctioning for urgency in everything I've got to do. I woke up this morning and I had some things heavy on my spirit when I got in this house and dealing with the madness I have to go into today. And I was like, all of a sudden, God said, my word is not rhetoric to you. It's life to you. You are light in darkness. So darkness is going to try to come at you, but it cannot. It can't. It can't. You're light. And the darkness wants to cover you up. And you get caught up in walking through a dark world. And so you're trying to walk in this dark world and put a bushel over you. You can't put a bushel over what the power of God that's in you. You can't put a bushel over light. Because the light in the old days was fire. Whether it was through an oil lamp or through a candle. And if you put a dry bushel that's meant to collect harvest. You ain't even using the bushel in the right way. If you're trying to cover it up. Instead of drawing and collecting the harvest, you trying to cover up your light with it. That bushel will catch on fire because I need that light to be seen in the darkness so that I can draw the people that I need to draw through you. We can no longer walk in this world in darkness. We can no longer cover ourselves up in this hour. We need to get our focus on things above and not beneath. We need to be about Daddy God's business. And everybody who is a kingdom kid, you got some Daddy God business that is not just about you. We go into workplaces that are dark. They do not understand us. We cannot hide things. My friend said they don't understand. No, some of them don't yet, but some of them might later. There are things that God gave us back in the day we didn't understand. I've read the word about uh, <laughs> a bushel in light and never had comprehension until today when it became life. And God put feet to it through his Holy Spirit. What area of your life? Come on, y'all. What area of your life? Are you putting under a bushel that is God's business? You a kingdom kid. When you guys go into these workplaces, into these families, into friends, into wherever you go, the grocery store, the taxi cab, just walking down the street, you a kingdom kid. And kingdom kids, we walk in authority and power, and we better put life to some stuff. We got to get our head on the things above and not the things beneath. What that means is that the material world is not what we're about. We walk in something higher. This flesh suit is just that. That's why Paul talked about it. It's a tent. It's Y'all ain't got no time right now. I can't, I can't even go here right now. Wake up. The kids say you need to get woke, get woke in the spiritual things of God. Y'all, I can say a lot more, but we'd be on here for a minute right now with what God's got going on in my head and in my spirit. I want to thank y'all. And we're going to have more of these videos coming out. God has given me more direction than what I really expected. <laughs> and this morning it was like, poof, <laughs> poof. And I was like, okay, Lord, I see. Um, there's some things that are going to be coming to the Revelation Life channel. Um, I'm going to be putting some links for donations. I'm going to, and the donations right now will not be tax deductible until I get the 501c3 set up. But I'm going to have a link on there. It's uh, right now set up PayPal. I'll be doing Patreon. And uh, we're going to do that for all of the channels. I need to get the 501c3 set up for the Revelation Life Ministry channel. We're going to start doing Bible studies through this medium. Um, I, I'm probably going to start them up. I don't know if I'm going to do it once every other week or how I'm going to do it, but we're going to get a schedule set up. I'll have written material that can be, uh, you can get it 
through me online and I'll, I'll talk about how, how to get that out emailed to you. Um, and you can study alone. I'm more like the physical Bible study, but I realize that we've got people, I've got people reaching out to me from Africa on here. I've got people from other states and other countries. And I realize now, as much as I'm not a 100% fan, because I like, I like that face-to-face -face interaction when it comes to divine and the word of God. But this is a medium in which we are going to have to use to reach a broader audience. And to share God's word and to raise up people in how they should go. Um, through the donations, a lot of things are going to be able to happen. Um, we're registering 501c3. Um, trying to think what else we've got to do. I've got to get copyright logo stuff done. Um, I may have to end up getting some attorney information. Uh, there's going to be some things that are going to come to the channel. And I will let you know, and I'm very honest about everything that's going to happen. God is doing some stuff right now, people, and I cannot be the only one that this is happening to. I believe he is shaking some foundations. I was talking to Regina, uh, who does our, our devotionals or sends the devotionals over through Joyce Myers Ministry. It's who she usually uses. I talked to my sister, Christina. I've talked to Sherry, Sherry, and I want to thank those ladies because iron sharpens iron. And they, and even Deanne, when I'm dealing with corporate stuff, iron sharpens iron. And what that means is that we sometimes, when we're in the midst of a storm or an attack, we can't see clear. You can't see the forest for the trees. All you see is these trees around you, and you might not know what the heck is going on. And you're under attack, and you don't realize. And then when God shows up and says, wait, 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 wait. You think you're special that you're not supposed to go through an attack? You're supposed to go through attacks. You're going to go through them because he went through them. You're going to go through trials. You're going to go through fiery darts. You're going to go through folks coming up against you. You're going to go through folks being jealous of you. That's what the, the Pharisees and Sadducees situation was. They were jealous because Jesus was getting more attention than they were. And he walked in power. He walked in authority because he was deity. You some human beings of your father the devil because they weren't of God. They were of their father the devil. Otherwise they would have known who he was. Flesh and blood has not shown you this. <laughs> but my father who's in heaven is spiritual. You can't see through those glasses unless you have the right relationship. So we know who your father is. When you go up in these work, work, workplaces and folks is doing all sorts of malicious, crazy, demonic stuff. We know who their father is. You weeble wobble but you don't fall down because you kingdom kids. Let your light so shine before men. Don't put a bushel over it because it's going to catch on fire. For those of you on YouTube, there'll be a link below um, for donations. Everything's appreciated. Some of you have already reached out to me on my other channels. This will actually be now on the Revelation Life channel and on the Trucker Doll channel. Because like I told y'all, I'm Christian. The only channel that I run that will not have this type of content will be the Trucker 411 because it's a collaborative group. And we got people from all walks of life. And I respect that. And that's not the goal of that channel. It's truly a trucking channel to give people education about transportation. Um, but for all my other channels, even if I do have a trucking background and I work in a trucking industry, um, those channels will have Christian content because ultimately that is who I am. Uh, I want to say thank you, blessings. Once the 501c3 is set up, then I'll start talking about the nonprofit stuff and we'll go from there because there is some vision that God has given me right now and I need to, I'll probably be sitting at work during dead hours writing that up. Y'all, I want you to be blessed, two and two. God bless you. Thank you.